The video so nice, you know we had to do it twice. It's that time, WrestleMania season full swing. If you heard part one, this is part two. This is the Dangerous Jobbers podcast, and we are booking WrestleMania. People have been asking me to be the best in the world. Why, Eddie, why? I'm better than you. My eyes are red out in the back smoking a joint with their dance. No way I was gonna be able to do anything that that smooth. Um, <laughs> I'm your boy Stevie Jobber. And it's your boy Dangerous Duke. And we are back booking WrestleMania. This is part two. Hopefully you guys saw part one when Duke booked WrestleMania. I thought he had a great card and uh putting some extra stuff in there that made it very tough to follow. Uh but I'm gonna do my best today and hopefully I got something that is just as exciting. Uh, might even the, be more at the least or more i mean possibly but i mean you had a great night one if anybody didn't see it go watch night one when uh duke books wrestlemania or pod one part one when duke books wrestlemania cheap plug, um, cheap plug man uh so i'm gonna start with uh my night one and hopefully this car comes together i don't have a pre-show I think okay. Duke had the pre-show where they had the, the Battle Royals in there. I'm not having the pre-show, but uh, I do have a gimmick match that includes okay. multiple superstars from mine. And that starts with the opening match. I think night one, we start with the six-pack tag team uh, ladder match. So I have uh, the Judgment Day... Damian Priest and Finn Balor uh, putting the titles up against. I don't have all the teams together because mm-hmm. they're like they're three or four from each brand, th- two or three yeah. from each brand. But um, yeah, because it's not a, it's not a six pack. It might be an eight pack, right? No, it's a it's a many. six. Is it a six pack? Yeah. Right. Um, but just the names I'm thinking of off the bat were Imperium, mm-hmm. probably DIY. Possibly our truth and Miz, um, just to name a few. But the first match I had on the card was probably the ladder match because every year I feel like if there is a ladder match on WrestleMania, it's usually the first match, especially if it's multi man. Except for that one year they did the Fatal Four Away. I don't think that opened up the show, but mm-hmm. yeah, it just I feel like the ladder matches are are, are good to lead with something big and. Um, where the crowd is most likely always going to be entertained mm-hmm. and it doesn't put too much on the person following it because it's a gimmick match. Yeah. So you just kind of, you just kind of know you're not getting anything else like this for the rest of the night. Okay. Um, so I had the tag team six pack challenge and then I had AJ Styles versus LA Knight. In the second match? In the second match. I felt okay. like they would know how to slow it down but keep the crowd hype because it's L.A. night. So, you know, after a little calm of the dying down or the ladders getting out of the ring, that L.A. night music to have them come out first would get the big pop and the excitement back for the matches. So I thought that'd be a good one. Well, um, I, I, I like that placement. And it's funny you put them second because I've noticed as of late that's been the AJ spot lately. Second? A, yeah. Aside from the Undertaker match, AJ's usually been going second. Mm-hmm. It's almost like a Jericho like a Jericho thing. Mm-hmm. That is interesting. Well, he's the veteran. Yeah, that I mean, that's why. So I don't that's I don't mind very, it. Yeah, that's a very important part on the card. Because mm-hmm. after that first one, you gotta keep that intensity but be different. Mm-hmm. AJ's always really good at that. That's why I put him there. I thought AJ, if anybody, AJ would be able to keep the quality of the night going, but LA Knight would be able to bring that immediate crowd energy back after, you know, a draining ladder match. Yes. So that'd be a good spot for them. Uh, after AJ, LA Knight, um, did we pick, did you pick winners? Did we pick winners for? I didn't pick winners. We didn't pick any winners, right? So no. I didn't pick any winners. Um, Bailey versus EO. 
I had after AJ and LA Knight. Okay. Uh, I had Bailey versus EO for the women's championship. So that'd be a good spot for them because their match wouldn't be anything like AJ and LA Knight. That mm-hmm. one's more of a it's different styles. You know, you're not getting styles the same styles back to back because LA Knight's gonna be a little slower. AJ's mm-hmm. gonna be a little more acrobatic. And then I feel like Bailey is gonna be a little more ground based and tell more of a story in the match with EO and EO's EO only takes but so many high flying maneuvers. Mm-hmm. So it wouldn't be quite as it wouldn't be quite as athletic as AJ's. Yeah. Uh as far as fast pace, but it would still be grandiose and they could tell the first like story of the night. Mm-hmm. Um, taking it back from there, we lead to another story. After that, I'll follow it up with another change of styles. Sami Zayn versus Gunther for the IC title. Nice. Okay. You get back-to-back title matches? Mm-hmm. Because I feel like that one's a good follow-up to the, get into the first, like, really good women, uh, men's title match. Sami mm-hmm. versus Gunther can, is kind of in this spot where they can live in a moment halfway before the really big parts of the night. This is the first, kind of the first high profile match after the women's match. Yeah. Um, Sammy, because Sammy versus Gunther is probably one of those first matches that you just want to see because of the match instead of the story. Mm Mm-hmm. Because I feel like LA Knight's more of a story thing. Bailey's more of a story thing. Sammy's kind of rushed, so that's the first big match. Yeah. So Sammy versus Gunther uh, to just have this, you know, heavy underdog battle. Yeah, the, your, your David versus Goliath match. The classic David versus Goliath. And then from there, we turn it up. Because after that, I have Uso versus Uso. Mm-hmm. Jimmy versus Jack. Okay. I have them following that uh, just to start the, like, okay, here we are. And these are the big matches. You know what I'm saying? This is all the stuff we've been waiting for. Mm-hmm. Um, and then kind of a, kind of a rope-a-dope thing. Because I, I have Sammy versus going through. Then I have Uso versus Uso to get the crowd, you know, hype for that next ending portion of the night. Mm-hmm. But I have the Usos getting good time. Yeah. After Sammy versus Gunther, and I, I kind of have that as the last big time match before mm-hmm. Roman, uh, Roman and Rock and Seth and Cody, because uh, I have the Uso versus Uso, and then the second to last is actually Ray versus Santos. Oh, and I have them in that spot as the first hardcore spot of the night. Mm, okay. Just like you did, but I had it as kind of the the heater because it'll be one of those where the crowd can be excited, but if it needs to be shortened, it can, as long as yeah. it just keeps those hardcore spots in there. And you had it night one as opposed to me having it night two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I had it I had it early night one because Ray's ECW and then you can get those early you can probably i probably wouldn't blow it up like i like we talked about in the first part mm-hmm. make it like a whole gangland thing but because it can be shortened or lengthened have enough time for it to be just the you know the cameo fest for different yeah. hardcore wrestlers as it comes to a close um okay. they could always pull out savio vega mm-hmm. um and then after that i actually have the Hall of Fame spot. Because oh, okay. I rerunning this, I forgot that they always had that highlight Hall of Fame spot. Mm-hmm. And I felt like there needed to be some sort of break before Rock and Roman and Seth and Cody, but I wouldn't I didn't want to sacrifice a, a a good match there. Yeah. So I thought even if Ray and Santos get a little time off, they're still getting a great spot on the show. Because mm-hmm. they're the ECW spot. So the Hall of Fame spot can either be a little rushed or a little 
a little long, depending on the gap they need to fill. Yeah. And we get to see Paul, you know, before Rock and Roman and Seth and Cody. And he'll roll right into that. Okay. And then after that, of course, Seth and Cody versus Rock and Roman, night one, is the main event. Mm-hmm. Um... And I just felt like that, you know, that's that's got to be the main event, of course. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, just that felt like it felt like it flowed right there. Yeah, I I like I actually like the placement that you did with the Hall of Fame spot where they bring everybody out on the on the stage, they acknowledge who they are and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But now that you say that, it kind of has me wondering. Normally, when they do the Hall of Fame spot, they have all the norm, like all the people they're inducting out there, and then the big name of it gets his own entrance or her own entrance to come mm-hmm. out and stand in the middle. Mm-hmm. If Paul gets his own entrance, what song would they use for Paul? Would it oh, would it ha- would it have to be the the Roman Reigns song, the the Tribal Chief song? I'm not, sh- you know, I'm not sure. That's a great question. Or would yeah. or would it be the ECW theme song? Oh, you know what? It probably would be ECW, right? I would imagine. I, I would think it has to be the ECW, the ECW theme. theme song. Probably be the ECW theme. Just to separate the Paul character in Philly <laughs> from what we're about to do right after this. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It, it, it might be better to just use that ECW, ECW theme. Yeah, mm-hmm. that'd, that'd be sick, actually. That's a great call. That's I was thinking call. that. Yeah, that's pretty fantastic. Um, but yeah, yeah, I'd have the the ladder match: AJ, Bailey, Io, Sammy, Gunther, the Usos at the top of the second half. Ray and Santos give the hardcore spot, Hall of Fame spot. Have Paul come out with the ECW theme, and okay. then we. Take it home with the big match. I just thought for for night one, I still wanted to get the matches we really wanted to see, but I wanted to kind of now that we know it's going to be Sammy Gunther, it places it different for me than it would if it was Gable and Gunther. Yeah, because now I feel like Sammy's going to lose. But <laughs> yeah, gotta be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now that we know there's going to be a six pack challenge, which we didn't know a couple of days ago. It's like okay, good that lord, that's gonna, a different picture for me now. Yeah, that's got to go first because good lord, that's going to take time. Because that and that's the thing, right? I think that was the big thing that changed night one, or just my booking in general, is finding out the extra two bits of information as we get closer. It's mm-hmm. like oh, okay, well, now I wouldn't put the tag team match where I would normally put it because now it's a six pack challenge. Yeah, um, and we had an epiphany when you did the booking last time about the women that is going to come into play night two. Mm -hmm. Um, So night two, I have actually starting with Seth and Drew. Only because I feel like it won't be the only time we see Seth. So normally if somebody's making more than one appearance, they're the first match on the card. Yes. Uh, So I have Seth versus Drew, which I have uh, a cash in occurring. Mm-hmm. I don't know if Damien will win or lose, but I feel like that's going to be the spot. Especially depending on who wins. Um, but I have Drew versus Seth for the World Heavyweight Championship. And then I have the women's, uh, the women's tag title match as a okay. ladder match. Between either they're going to do a, a fatal four way or a six pack. They have enough to do a six pack. And I could see them doing a six pack to include four more women on the show. But I only could give you maybe three teams that are legit and running up to that. Mm-hmm. That have stories, kind of, which would be Candace and Andy Hartwell. Mm-hmm. Uh, that would be Natalia and Tegan Knox and Shayna and Zoe Stark. Yeah. Uh, Maxine and Ivy Nile are kind of a thing, but not really. 
Yeah, it's like it's there, but it's not there. It's still trying to find its way there. So I don't, I don't, I don't really see that one. But if they could do that one and add another and make it a six pack, that is what it is. But I, I think I they would do a, that. A women's fatal four way, unless they were just trying to include more women on the card. No, no, I, I think you could definitely pull off a six pack with the four teams you just said, and then you add in the Kabuki Warriors, and then you also do uh, Caden Carter and Katana Chance. <gasps> So you can do a six pack, yeah. Yeah, you could, you could, you, you could do definitely do a make six a six pack. pack possible. So yeah, yeah. We well then that would be the six pack uh, women's ladder match, and I feel like they could do it. I don't think the women have done a six pack before. No, um, yeah, this would be the even, first time. I don't time even think they've done a fatal four way ladder match before. So it would be, it would be history making. They've done a fatal four way. They have done a fatal four way, just not as a ladder match. Just not as a ladder match. Because that was the year I think Mandy slipped down the ramp. Mm. Oh, sh- <laughs> I, I mean I it's it's sad that, that that's how I remember I it, but yeah, yeah I, I think they have done a fatal four way, just hasn't been a ladder match, or maybe it was a ladder match, and I'm just mistaken. But either way, women's six pack, uh, I feel like it'd be really cool. I feel like we're all expecting Seth versus Drew, so it's easier to put that out first. Give the people what they're expecting, uh, and then hype everything up like the show's actually starting. In a way, it's making one of the high-profile matches kind of the kind of the uh, the pre-show match without making it a pre-show match, just because yeah. it's the one everyone kind of already knows the outcome to. And mm-hmm. then it's like, all right, well, now let's let's have some fun. We have the women's ladder match, and then I actually have uh, a gimmick spot to get another hardcore spot in there before the big the big big matches happen. Grayson Waller and Austin Theory I mm. have doing a spot where uh in whatever skit they're doing or whatever, you know, live whether it's a show or whatever, I have a spot where Grayson Waller and Austin Theory uh end up getting 3D by the Dudleys. <laughs> Hell yeah! For for no apparent reason, I just know we love the Dudleys. Yeah, and we love the Dudleys in Philly, and you know they they know this. This is something they know. This is something they've acclimated to, and it just would be cool. And Bubba's already down to do a three D in Philly at WrestleMania. Why not? Why not? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying, and and who perfect to take the L than the resident Austin Theory? You know what I'm saying, and maybe that can be uh, the last nail in the coffin that gets us to Theory versus Waller, because mm-hmm. <laughs> maybe Waller would roll out of the ring instead of <laughs> instead of saving Theory from a 3D. Mm-hmm. You know, they could break up on Monday, uh, but just to get a good Dudley spot in there, because I feel like you fill the ECW spot from night one with just guys that we love but hold back the Dudleys so that we're waiting for it on night two. Like, that can't be everything, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um, So maybe I have, like, Sandman or somebody out there for night one. Like, I I would say, like, Sandman. I I would say go with the four originals. Sandman, RVD, Sabu, and um, Dreamer. And Dreamer. And Dreamer. Um, And then night two, give us the Dudleys. Uh, and have them 3D theory, and then we leave. We give enough space from that women's ladder match where everyone's exhausted to a comedy spot, and then we can get to some some good matches. Mm-hmm. First of all, being the money match, which I'm sure is probably going to be sponsored by something other than Prime as well. Uh, the U.S. Triple Threat that I still have down for Logan Paul, KO, and Randy Orton. Which I think is just going to be a great solid middle match to carry us over. Because mm-hmm. Randy's not going to take a lot. I don't know if they're going to add a stipulation to it. Because KO is pretty hardcore. And, you know, they're using brass nugs. I could just see that happening. Uh, especially since triple threats are usually no DQ anyway. Yes. As a standard now. So, US triple threat. Um, just to hype the crowd back up, gives enough space for the women's match, and is a gimmicky enough match 
that the last ones can all kind of be straightforward one on ones. Mm-hmm. That being said, Becky Lynch versus Rhea Ripley. Following that, uh, I didn't have much of a reason to put it there other than this is another one of those matches that are like, all right, this has to happen. And like some people will be excited for it, so we should give it appropriate time. Mm-hmm. So it can't be second to last. But it, are, it is also at a spot where you could take it or leave it and consider it as bathroom break if you're not very interested in the match. Um, mm-hmm. And you're just looking for the rear Ripley finish. Yeah. After that, uh-huh. the match I have second to last that I feel like is something they made important but didn't necessarily make important enough for us to like care about it as far as all the other matches that are happening at WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. So I have either the Pride versus Final Testament as a group or Bobby versus Karrion Cross the rematch. Whoa. At WrestleMania second to last. This is why. Whoa. People just love Bobby. Right? Yeah. But at the same time, you could you could definitely see, oh, they're doing Bobby versus Karrion and be like, man, I forgot about that match. As in regards to everything else. And normally, the second to last match is the match you forgot about. So, <laughs> so they just are in a spot where you know it's going to be good and you know you want to see Bobby, but you're not necessarily looking for that match. But the match has to happen at some point. So second to last, as like the cool down before Cody versus Roman, the match you really came to see, is probably the best spot for them because you can take time or give them time and nobody probably is really going to care because they're probably not going to remember it after all the other matches on the night. You know what I'm saying? You know what? You are right. You are. But it's also going to put a lot of, in my opinion, a lot of pressure on the both of them. Because yeah. if they have to take time, it's gonna be, it's gonna add more pressure. And as crazy, and I don't even want to say as crazy as it may sound, but Bobby's gonna be the one carrying the match majority of the time. Mm-hmm. Like it, it's gonna be Bobby's dance to lead, and I and I think that's a good thing because this might be Bobby's first time leading a Mania match. Well, not to and and not to mention it 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 does it puts a lot of pressure on them, but. I also, I hold a lot in regards to you're messing with the right minds for that kind of a spot. Mm -hmm. Because you got Bobby, who's a former world champion. And you got the Prophets, who are used to high-profile matches. And if nobody else, you have Paul Elring from the Final Testament to try and put a match together that can fit the time constraints but can highlight both of these big dudes in a way that, yeah, you that... Know, can lend itself or take itself. Yeah, and they can both kind of go fast pace if need be. So, yeah, Paul, I, like Paul, it's, it's a I forgot position. about the, I forgot about the Paul Ellering aspect. That's yeah. definitely a nice little addition to add in there. I agree. I like that. So I feel like they won't, they won't let us down. It's a high profile. It's a high profile spot. I'll agree. When I put them there, I was like, "Man, that's gonna be some weight to carry mm-hmm. next to the main event." On the, the on, time, on paper, it is on paper, but at the same time, I think you know you lower your you you as a fan watching instead of a booker, you've lowered your expectations when you're like, "Oh, there's one more match," because there's always one more match than you thought it'd be before the the main event. So by that time, I feel like the crowd is satisfied and you don't really have uh, as much pressure as an exhausted fan as you would think. You yeah. just kind of have to do your best. And also at that point, you got the right minds to be like, if they cut us by three minutes, we can make we the can get there. adjustments. Mm-hmm. We can get where we need to be. So, And it's a totally different match because it's two powerhouses rather than an underdog story. It's just kind of a war. Not for nothing, this is still a good spot for them, too, because for some reason, like, Bobby's loved in Philly. He's mm-hmm. loved everywhere, but he's loved in Philly. And Cross also has that MLW experience of being in the city. MLW's big in Philly, so 
either way, the crowd will still be happy to see them. It won't be the biggest thing, but Mm -hmm. it'll still be a thing that they can see. And that's a great nugget, too. Karrion Cross is has been in MLW, and Philly loves MLW. Philly MLW is heavy in Philly, so a lot of us know and love Karrion Cross. So that's Killer Cross. So he he does have a fan base that's gonna be there. So even though it's a tough spot, they have enough of they have enough roots. They have enough roots and brain power to make that position work. And then of course, you have the main event with Cody and Roman, which is gonna probably take 45 minutes but it's probably gonna be hour. a great match <laughs> yeah probably, probably an hour, hour. adding probably adding the hour. entrances and everything else yeah it's gonna be so grandiose um but that that of course has to be the finish because that's the biggest match and yeah um have we said what we feel about how things are gonna go at the end because i have an inner i have an interference from somebody going on at the end i think we said that too i think yeah you said, i i, you I had some Owen interference at play. yeah like, I, in your head yeah. possibly yeah I, I said it's either gonna be it could be a werewolf or it could be a gorilla mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's what i said so i have an interference going but i i i have multiple i don't know if it's gonna be a samoan uh it could just be somebody that was previously in a match before well it depends on who wins night one it depends on who wins night one, but um, I definitely have an interference coming in my main event to not detain any victories. But I mean, at that point, it's going to be a monster show of a match. So yeah, I can't expect that happening without interferences. Um, but yeah, I felt like that was just a good card because having Seth first is kind of the match nobody really cared for. And then starting Which the match, I would start the pay per view. Yeah, yeah, it is ironic, and I mean, it's, I don't know, it's fun, it's 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 funny, it's funny, it's laughable at times because. Like, ah. But in, in Seth's defense, it's not his fault. It really is not. It really is not. But you it's know just the funny. hand he's dealt. It is, and if you listen to, it, it's funny because Seth, Seth kind of said everything we were thinking on Monday in his promo with Drew, where he was like, you know why I haven't been worried about you? Because you're, you're, you're at the very bottom of my list of things I need to care about. I'm the least threatened by your thing. Like, that's whatever this thing you got going on is, mm-hmm. the least of my worries. And it kind of is the reflection of how the fans are feeling about the situation, too. So to have that as the first match... Even if it's a shock win, having that as the first match, it's still the match is like, oh, okay, I see why they're <laughs> starting with this. And then it'll suddenly blow you away and we'll realize they're great wrestlers again. But it, for the time being, it's like low value. And then after that match, it's like, okay, here we go. Now yes. it's WrestleMania time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So and that, that was just the best. Yeah. I actually like the placement of some of yours. I, I like the. Uh... The, the switch and Ray over to night one and and the Dudley spot, you still managed to get the ECW aspect in on both nights instead of just one night like I did. Kind of jealous you chose the Dudleys because I didn't think to pick the Dudleys, and that's <laughs> like that's like open mouth insert foot right there on me. Um, well, I'm a little jealous. I am. I'm not going to lie. I, I thought, listen, going into this, I'm just proud to have survived. Because yeah. that night, your, your first two nights were like, I don't know how you draw it up better than that. All of these spots fit. And I mean, your tough spot instead of uh, Bobby and Carrion for me was the Bailey Eel spot because you had yeah. to last on one of those nights. But I thought you drew it up really good. So by the time I was I was going to draw it up, I was like, oh man, how do I how do I do this differently and have it have it go just as good if not better yeah and you did a good job yours was more like you you actually made it kind of even night one and night two as opposed to where i kind of front loaded night one a little bit out of bias Mm -hmm. but that's that that was just my thinking well I, i felt like the only thing we lose out on the way i drew it up is probably the triple threat 
Um, yeah. Because for all the people that wanted to see Rhea, I felt like Rhea's definitely a night two thing, right? Yeah, yeah. So I felt like I just, I wanted to, I, I, I kept it to getting all the people we really like, but just kind of, I took that one L for the betterment of the cards and it kind of just ended up making it even. And you had nothing putting in ladder matches kind of does that itself. Yeah. And you also added more, uh, you added one more title match to the main card than I did. Oh, which one did I, which one? The the women's tag titles. I put that on, that was on my pre-show. You put that on your main card. Right, right, right. Because I didn't have a. I just don't like pre shows. You know why? I have a. Yeah. Show, but I don't watch them. <laughs> After I realized the pre show was just like showing all the promos beforehand, I was like, I'm off the pre show stuff. Honestly, I think the last time I've watched the pre show, this is how long ago it was. Austin Aries was here. Bro, why was I about to say that? All right, let's, get that <laughs> let's get this off, and then we'll we'll go to we'll we'll, we'll close the show. But absolutely, actually, it's the same. I remember WrestleMania being one night, and I remember them starting at like five o'clock. Yeah, because WrestleMania becomes such a day, like it was a holiday. Yeah. So like, it was your whole day, bro. So. They would start earlier and earlier, and they started at like five o'clock. It was the one they had outdoors. Well, they yeah. have all of them outdoors nowadays, but they had it outdoors, a five o'clock long ass ramp. It was back when everything was white. I think that might have been the year that uh, 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 Zach Ryder won the IC title. It might have been. Um, but I it do was remember. It- it was either that or the year Sting fought Triple H. Or the year Sting fought Triple H. I definitely think it was the year Sting fought Triple H. Um, but yeah, they had Theory fight for like the the Cruiserweight title, right? They had and Aries like, fight for the Cruiserweight title. And they had Aries fight for the Cruiserweight title, and it was like the first time we got to see him since like he was... It was like his first really big match. It was like the first time we got to see yeah, him. Yeah, I, like really I believe it was him and Neville. Him and Neville. And, and I think it went well, but it didn't go as well as we had expected it to. It went well. The ending was just a little sour. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I do remember that. That was the last time I remember watching, watching a pre-show. Because <laughs> I was like, no, they, this pre-show is fire. You got to see this. You almost, you almost were upset that they didn't make it part of the main show. But it was so long that, like, you just, you understood it. Yeah. But it was like, yeah, yeah, that was it was that long ago. Yeah, man, it's weird. Yeah, that was some years. I think I was still working at like Shoprite. Like, <laughs> it's crazy. That was the, that was my furniture mecca days. We yeah. look at how much we have grown since then. It's been so long, so long since we cared about a pre-show. <laughs> but with that yeah. being said, ladies and gentlemen, you know what it is. I booked WrestleMania. Stevie Jobber booked WrestleMania. Let us know what you think. Drop it down in the comments. Let us know what you thought of Stevie's show. If his show was better than mine. If it was worse than mine. If it was about the same. Either way, drop it down there. Let us know. And make sure, as always, you like the video. You hit the bell for the notifications. You stay up to date on everything myself and Stevie Jobber do. Because you already know we got some dope stuff dropping. You know we going to WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. You ain't going to want to miss that. So make sure you stay linked in and make sure you check us out on all the listening platforms, be it Spotify, YouTube, um, Apple Music, X, TikTok, Instagram, all that dope stuff. And last but not least, make sure you check out DangerousJobbersWebsite.com. Always some new stuff up there. And that's it for the booking WrestleMania. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure you guys stay up. Make sure you guys stay blessed. And as always, stay dangerous. People have been asking me to be the best in the world. Why, Eddie, why? Why?